I recently did a video on how to do a cheap bike restoration and this Trek 800 was featured. And in this video, I'm going to dive into this Trek 800 mountain bike restoration and discuss why I feel it's still special enough to be worthy of my time fixing it up. Please like and subscribe, really appreciate it. I also have a Facebook group for like-minded people who are into bike restorations. You can find the link to that group in the description below. So the bike is meant for my daughter who wants to ride a mountain bike because I do. And it had to be blue and preferably be meant for women because she's used to get off the bike by moving her foot over the down tube rather than over the back wheel. I believe this is her fifth bike and it's her first adult bike as well, although a very small frame. And what's interesting is that her fourth bike was a new you know, Walmart type mountain bike, which cost 189 euros. And the reason why we bought the Muddy Fox was that the 26 inch bike turned out to be too big. And I was unable to find a 24 inch Vince Mounts bike. We also thought that because she had three second hand bikes, I literally pulled out of the trash she deserved to have a new one for one. And this Trek 800 was 50 euros, was, was 30 years old and had been le left out in the rain. It worked, but could definitely do with a good clean and some new cables. The bike uh, has a steel frame with quite a bit of rust, but in too good a shape to be spray painted. And the same did not apply for the handlebars and stem, which were faded and rusted. The reason why I feel that vintage mountain bikes make for such great restoration projects is because of their simplicity and the fact that a good cleaning of what's usually Shimano parts will make them work again like new. And the first thing I wanted to do after I had completely disassembled the bike was polishing the frame and I'm using Meguiar's Ultimate Compound to really bring back to life that nice deep shine of the paint. I use it on my car, but it's just as good for bicycle frames. I also hand sanded and spray painted the handlebars and stem, which is one of my least favorite parts of a bike's restoration because it's so incredibly time consuming. And the hops from both wheels were cleaned and re-greased. I was positively surprised by the Shimano Aldis group set for such an old, well-used entry-level group set. They worked exceptionally well after I cleaned all the necessary parts and installed new cables and housing. So the shifters are classic 90s style SRAM MRX 100 grip shifts. I actually thought at first that the right shifter was missing the adjuster knob until I saw on the video I made earlier that it's not supposed to have one. So that's an odd design choice because it means that after you have installed the derailleur cable, you can only adjust the rear derailleur using the adjustment on the derailleur. It works, but it's just a little more cumbersome to fine tune the bike. A quick cable installation tip is not to remove the housing when reinstalling the cable, but to remove the steel ring inside to insert the cable. The reason for this is that it took me 30 minutes with the help of an official video tutorial to get the thing back uh, together again. It's probably me, but it was very frustrating nonetheless. So I don't know if it's because I want these older bikes to be better than similar products from today. I might be biased here, but I have a really hard time imagining a new drivetrain bought today still working 30 years from now, let alone all of those electronic parts. So bicycle products today are so heavily performance oriented and I don't hear a lot of brands or people online promoting longevity or sustainability or your wallet. I also re-greased the head tube bearings. Unfortunately, they were fine and not rusted or pitted. The brake arms and crank set received a quick polishing with the polishing wheel. The polishing wheel is one of the best investments from a bike restoration perspective. With this tool, it is relatively easy to make old aluminum parts look like new. And with all those parts cleaned and restored, there was nothing left 
to do for me except to put the bike back together again. And I was so happy with the result that I actually started to buy an old track mountain bike for myself. But you know, I still have three more projects waiting for me. So that would add to my restoration backlog. So I hope you liked the video and let me know if you feel the bicycle industry has taken a turn for the worst in terms of bicycle and bicycle component quality. Really interested to learn what you feel about this subject. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see you back again for the next video. Bye for now.